Hello and good weekend to all folks, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading, the 10th of April 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of markets and trading, let's uh, try and decipher as to uh, what the week ahead holds in terms of the market itself. Now, first and foremost, let's just quickly look at the actual numbers for US markets and the actual closing there. Uh, US markets on Friday certainly could close negative. Therefore, you are looking for a negative bias to feed through into Asia and obviously feed through into the uh, European markets as well. Now, the uh, Dow, down more or less uh, flat, but negative. S&P down as well. Nasdaq more or less flat stroke negative global down gold oil now let's try and decipher the fundamentals okay now we have the geopolitical scenario uh, as the uh, front and uh, front and center really of this uh, market at present although it was ignored on Friday and that was due to many other reasons now first of all uh, we have the uh, North Korean missile uh, we see uh, a situation and escalation there as well we have the Syrian situation where America obviously has uh, gone, gone ahead and uh, taken unilateral action, which certainly seems to be a common thing now. Uh, the United Nations really is uh, is no longer required. So they've basically gone and attacked the uh, this so-called air base in order to obviously deplete Assad and his regime. Now, that in and of itself has been negated or has been uh, basically questioned because planes are now taking off from the very same airstrip that they apparently bombed. So... That's not that's no use, is it? I mean, if you're going to uh, degrade somebody's capability and yet he can start to fly and land planes the next day. I mean, that's not exactly degrading. So, again, he's been, his strategy is now being called into question. You had Steve Bannon last week as well, who was sacked prior to the China meeting as well. So, again, certainly seems like the uh, Chinese meeting so far has been very cordial. His threats of calling, uh, Ch well, claiming China was raping his country, so on and so forth, is uh, idiotic uh, remarks as usual. OK, lacking any uh, type of intelligence, really. Uh, but that's him. OK, we have to embrace that. Um, that's just his character, really, is uh, one of a, a very odious character, a very ill-mannered uh, individual, OK, uh, and apparently is a leader of the uh, the Western world, which is a shame, really, because we have many more great leaders that could uh, do a much better job. OK, so that is the status quo, folks, and no matter how much we uh, dislike it, we have to embrace it. That is the status quo, and it's basically just remain patient. And uh, let's hope for the next potential successor to uh, to uh, drastically improve. And to be honest with you, anybody could do a better job than him, um, really. Uh, OK, so um, in terms of the markets, again, you have uh, geopolitical concerns front and centre now. Uh, the Iranians and the uh, Syrians, basically, or the Iranians, Syrians and the Russians basically have been told that uh, they must uh, basically uh, withdraw the troops. Otherwise, they face war, uh, aggression. Uh, the Russians have already stated that they were one inch from war. So the whole scenario certainly seems to be getting out of control. You have the situation in Egypt now as well, where um, let's pray for the people, those that have passed away, uh, and uh, let's hope this doesn't happen ever again, where two churches have been bombed, and uh, now the Egyptian situation certainly seems to be out of control as well, with troops being deployed down in Egypt, and that certainly is unsettling. So the concept of the one and done, Okay, has certainly been uh, negated now, given the fact that uh, uh, the uh, the actual national secretary advisor as well, uh, certainly stating that uh, their their issue now is regime change. That's their aim. Okay, so the one and done policy is certainly out the window now. It certainly seems like Mr. Trump is hands on, even though he claimed prior to coming to being elected that he would not be got wasting money on war, which obviously is on a complete U-turn. And uh, also he said that he would brand uh, China a currency manipulator again. That has been negated as well. So his hostile rhetoric towards China in order to get votes obviously succeeded. Now that he's in power, he doesn't care at all. Okay, and nor does he care about the uh, the potential voters that uh, that that actually um, brought him into power. His, his approval ratings have dropped. I mean, the worst approval ratings ever for a president. So that, so the whole scenario certainly seems seems to be interwoven. Adding the fact that uh, he's failed in the health care bill. Okay, and now he's losing. Uh, people are losing hope in terms of the tax reform. Uh, and deregulation etc so the whole situation from my perspective really is that you have trump on the decline okay whether you want to look at it politically socially militarily etc uh, all those facets certainly are occurring okay uh, you are seeing 
A risk aversion kicking in now with geopolitical concerns via North Korea, via Syria and Egypt now as well. The situation certainly seems to be um, one of uncertainty and uncertainty generally is negative for the stock market. So let's see exactly what's happening with the uh, technical picture now to see if we can uh, uh, cause the uh, fu uh, fundamentals to align with the technicals. Let's start off with the German DAX. Weekly chart is bear a double top bearish. Provided we remain below that double top, which I've explained multiple times at 12.380, bias remains firmly bearish, especially when you have fundamentals confirming it as well. Friday's jobs data was certainly weak again. Okay, Now, uh, again, that's a risk of trade. If we're buying this market on anticipation of a stronger growth, obviously that certainly isn't the equation if we have a weaker job numbers. So bear that in mind too. We also had weaker economic data from... Um, France and the UK uh, on Friday, and yet uh, they uh, managed to weather the storm on the back of potentially uh, commodities moving higher as well, and on the back of obviously the uh, the um, uh, shall we say um, the jovial relationship between the uh, or the cordial relationship between US and China, and certainly wasn't as bad as everybody expected. So certainly an element there of short squeeze uh, is certainly taking place. Okay. Now, in terms of the German DAX, a daily chart at the moment is held previous resistance equals support at 12,150. Okay, ideally you are looking for gap fill below the target being 11, well, let's call it 11,990. You're looking for gap fill. That's what I would personally be aiming for. Looking at a 10 minute chart, the 10 minute chart certainly has bounced, like I said, on the back of China as well, even though we had ge geopolitical concerns on Friday. Obviously, the euro dropping as well, certainly helping the German DAX. We actually went above and closed the gap. Gap fill is at 12 to 30. So watch out for resistance at 12 to 30. If you take into account the top at 12 to 40 as well. So you're looking at 12 to 30, 40 resistance on the German DAX, looking to potentially move lower, folks. OK, just bear that in mind. And remember, they can fill gap at 12,000 as well. Looking at the French CAC, the French CAC really is the strongest link out of them all. The 10-minute chart, you can see certainly breaking out on a Friday. Very, very impressive after building a base at 5,000, 5, 5,100. Um, certainly needs to be respected. Now, the weekly chart at the moment really is in no man's land. Okay, certainly is in no man's land. You have a potential hanging man candle as well, so bear that in mind. Daily chart at the moment from uh, looking at a historical perspective, the next real resistance is seen at 5,190 region. Until then, really, we are in no man's land and there is a possibility of moving higher. But given the uh, geopolitical concerns which I've highlighted, one would expect the markets to reverse lower. 60 minutes, yo. Yeah. Looking at double top scenario here on the 60 minute chart, so therefore looking for a potential move lower. 10 minute chart, like I said, has broken out. If it's a breakout, yes, we respect it. Okay, for now, but my understanding and my interpretation, given geopolitical events, uh, you are looking at a potential reversal and a sell-off on the uh, uh, the CAC itself down to the uh, 5090 region and then potentially even lower. So again, bias certainly remains bearish there too. FTSE 100. Okay, FTSE 100 looking at the weekly chart. You really are broken out, broken out of that rising type wedge pattern. Okay, so that certainly is interesting. It means, it means you're vulnerable in the downside. Okay, uh, this uh, daily chart certainly has a HNS formation. So again, <clears throat> that HNS formation expected to be tagged. Bear in mind the right shoulder. 60 minute chart at the moment, you have low lows and low highs. You're coming into that right diagonal uh, trend line resistance. You've got solid resistance around this region, around 7355, 50, and 60. And therefore, you are looking for a risk aversion trade. Okay, last but not least, looking at the euro stocks, very, very impressive thrust highs thus far. Okay, but you are capped at this resistance now. The resistance being at the uh, four five hundred region. Okay, so certainly looking for that to hold, and then uh, looking for the French CAC certainly to uh, to potentially move lower. So bear that in mind. Sixty minute chart as well. You got the key resistance in this region. The only real catalyst for us to move higher really would be something like a potential QE extension, etc., etc. Concrete details from that. But for now. Geopolitical concerns certainly seem to be weighing on the index. Okay, daily chart at the moment looking for bear flag to play out. If we take out that bear flag and we negate the red candle, then you can certainly respect the uh, the actual uh, 
mark its ability to move higher. If not, then the bear flag will play out. Okay, I think that's a good summation really of your US equities. Please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.